All right, part three. Captain, Captain with a J. Captain Caffey, do you have a hate for stupidity? Hate's a very strong word, and I don't use that word lightly. I do not hate people that are stupid, especially if they are just simply born with a low IQ. That is not something that they can help. Uh, sometimes stupid behavior is honestly the best that a person can do, right? And seriously, when it comes down to it, we're all just stupid, relatively furless monkeys bumbling our way through life. So come on. Of course people are going to do stupid things. We are stupid animals. You need a lot of patience with your fellow humanity, I think. Uh, hate's a strong word. Don't use it lightly. Dislike, frustrated, fine, hate, come on. Hate, what's the response to hating something? Destroying it, right? Hate, hate leads to killing, right? Don't use hate lightly. Don't throw that word around too lightly. Uber Gossen, 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 Gossen. How old were you when you met your wife? Uh, 16 in high school. It was the end of sophomore year in, in high school. And then we were hanging out in the same group of friends all summer. And we actually started dating uh, the beginning of junior year. So we've been together since late 1996. Uh, how am I Narshreth starts with a G. Hope that's a silent G at the front of that. Do you play slash plan on playing any new video games? Uh, yeah, eventually. <laughs> uh, I might get Prototype because it's being released for PC. I'm um, looking forward to Assassin's Creed 2. Looking forward to Beyond Good and Evil 2. What else? Um. Starcraft, whenever that comes out, uh, old the Old Republic for an MMO for PC is looking really good. Uh, what else? But what am I playing right now? Besides Team Fortress 2, and you know, eventually go uh, playing Portal puzzles when I get bored, or Peggle, <laughs> that's a good one too. I'm not really playing much. Every once in a while, I'll go downstairs and play an old PS2 game. Like I just beat uh, Kaya Dark Lineage again for the third time. Collected all those nudies, rescued all the natives. Um, but besides that, nothing on the horizon. I wish I had an Xbox 360 or a PS3. If I had a PS3, I'd be playing Infamous right now, but I don't have one. If I had an Xbox 360, uh, I'd probably be playing Prototype, but I don't have one, so stuck with my Wii. Gotta wait until uh, Corruption comes out. Mr. Kuba, 07. Favorite TV show of all time? of all time that is that's a huge question it's a huge question now how do I go about answering this do I think it's the most impressive it's the most memorable how about if I was stuck in a desert island with a TV and a DVD player and was only able to watch the entire run of a single show what show would it be hmm I probably have to say uh, Star Trek the Next Generation with Stargate SG-1 coming up as a close second. Sci-fi, yeah. That's just how I roll. Uh, favorite TV character of all time? Are you kidding me? I'd actually have to say to Paul on Enterprise. Why? Well, obviously, Jolene Blaylock is fantastically attractive. That aside, playing a Vulcan, right, requires a huge amount of subtlety. Not only subtlety, but facial control. The slightest movement, nod, raising of an eyebrow, even a smirk to get across to the audience what's going on internally takes a lot of skill. And I think a lot of times uh, actors who play Vulcans are underappreciated in the depth of their performance. And she was one of the main characters on the show, and she actually had a lot of personal interaction with uh, a bunch of, you know, humans who have much more exaggerated 
movements and facial expressions and inflections in the tones of their of, of voice and to be uh, the, the monotone deadpan actor in that scenario and still come across as being an emotionally whole character is excellent, excellent work by uh, Jolene Blaylock with that character and it's really a, a pleasure to watch every time she's on the screen. DJ Zaps, do you play any real-time strategies and so are you getting StarCraft 2? Uh, actually, the last real-time strategy I played was Warcraft 3. Warcraft 2, not so much back in the day. I was a huge StarCraft fan. Protoss for the win. Uh, carriers, oh, mass carriers with those interceptors all over the place. I have bogged down a computer with upgraded carriers flooding into a base. Oh, beautiful. Um, am I going to get StarCraft 2? Hell yeah, I'm going to get StarCraft 2, and I'm going to play the hell out of it. Uh, how do I pronounce this? Harlushian? F-J-A-R-H-U-L-T-I-A-N. How much coffee do you drink on a daily average? I need a prop. Okay, trip to the cupboard complete. About, here, up to my head, here's a comparison, about two to three of these, about two and a half on average of these every day. Um, that ends up being about two-thirds of a pot, and my wife will drink the other third. Um, yeah, that's about normal for me. Euro Invicta? Do you think YouTube has influenced your life, especially as a participant, not just a viewer? Has it solved any need in your life? Is it just a time killer, or have you had any substantial gain? Uh, when I started posting stuff on YouTube, it was basically... What is it? I had a desire to express my own personal opinion about a subject, uh, because I thought I had something to add. I thought that... I was saying something that I hadn't seen anybody else say before, right? And it, and it was also, um, let's see, why did I just view? I was viewing just, you know, when you watch YouTube just as a viewer, what are you watching? You're watching stupid stuff on the internet, you're watching fat people fall down, you're seeing cute pictures of cats doing funny things. So that's basically what I was doing, and all of a sudden, what happened? I saw Richard Dawkins on the news, being interviewed about the book that he had just published. Was it The God Delusion? I think it was The God Delusion. <clears throat> and, uh, that, actually, that video I did see on YouTube, and I was like, whoa, and there's a huge chain, and all these comments, and then I start poking around more, and I find this whole group, and back when I started a couple of years ago, who was it? It was Brett Keane, Captain Awesome, the Amazing Atheist, uh, Fake Sagan, who at the time was under, go, went under the name Hard Case Owns You, and a, a couple more, Thunderfoot, I think, uh, Pat Condell, I think. So a couple of big-name guys had just, basically just started, and they started gathering uh, subscribers, and I was like, hey, I'm one of these guys, too. So it was adding my voice to the chorus sort of thing, like, hey, here I am, um, I'm one of you guys too, and if anybody else is watching, there's a lot of us. You know, feel free to come out of the closet. So the sense of ideological community, I guess, was fulfilled. Um, and it got some things that I had just been keeping in my head and didn't really have a forum to express. I actually had a new forum to express. Um, and if you look at some of my earlier videos. My stumbling, not so much stumbling, but uh, it's hard to say. I'm definitely not comfortable speaking. I think that's readily apparent if you look at some of my older stuff, that I'm not comfortable at formulating my ideas. I think I'm going to get shot down. No confidence. That's what it was. YouTube, posting stuff on YouTube has given me a lot of confidence in public speaking 
surprisingly, even though I'm just sitting in my office babbling at a webcam, uh, you, you can see like, you know, number of views, number of comments, that other people are actually watching the stuff that I'm posting. It just kind of blew my mind at first. And now, you know, a couple years later, and I've got like 1,100 and change subscribers and uh, active comment list on like every video that I post, like, it's, it, I'm surprised I'm dealing with it as well as I am, so I guess it's kind of made me grow as a person in that I'm more more eloquent and confident than I used to be.